Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So back in May of 2024, I made a video on the TID Radio H3, a nice little dual band handheld radio. Now this radio holds a nice little place in my heart. Now, not only for looks, but the fact that it has a clean transmit on two meters and the 70 centimeter handband. Now what I mean by clean transmit is that its spurious emissions are low enough to meet FCC regulations. And to me, that means that a lot of thought has gone into the design of this radio. Not only that, it's also the world's first handheld transceiver that can be programmed using a USB-C socket located on the radio itself by using a standard USB cable. And that's without the need for any special programming cable. Also, this radio only costs around $30 which if you weigh that up against the likes of Yaesu, Icom or Kenwood, it's a massive price difference. Of course, in terms of features and overall quality, nothing will really beat a top tier radio. So why am I showing you this radio again in this video? Well, thanks to a very clever guy under the username of Nick Shaw, he's developed some custom firmware that makes the TID Radio H3 a great radio to tinker and play with and even enjoy some different features. As with all custom firmware, it's totally unsupported from TID Radio themselves. But if you do have questions or issues, then there is a very good Facebook page for this custom firmware. And you can also post a message on the official website or forum to get support. And the latest version of this Nickshaw firmware and the forum can be found at nickshaw.co.uk. Now I'll leave a link below so it's easy for you guys to find it. Now, before I go through the current selection of features of this custom firmware, let me show you how easy it is to install this custom firmware onto the TID Radio H3. So first, we need to head to the Nickshaw website. Enter the forum and down the left side, there'll be a menu. Select Nick FWH3. The latest version of firmware should be listed towards the top under important threads. Now click that thread and look for the firmware download link. You can also use this same file and procedure for upgrading the previous version of custom firmware, along with viewing the release notes. Now, once you uncompress that archive that you just downloaded, you'll notice there's a quite a few files within this folder. You'll also notice something called Nick FW Programmer. Now we'll take a look at that in a moment, but first let me show you one way in which you can install this custom firmware to the radio. On this same website, you'll find a browser-based flashing tool. Simply choose the firmware file from the archive you just uncompressed like this. Then just click the serial port button. Of course, at this point, you will need to have the USB cable connected between your computer and the radio. So select the COM port of the radio and press the flash firmware button. Now a little prompt of instructions will appear telling you to turn the radio off. Then hold the PTT button while powering it back on. Now, as soon as you turn the radio on, you should see the firmware upload into the radio as indicated on screen. The radio screen will remain blank during this process. Once the flashing is finished, you may find that the radio will reboot and you'll be presented with the loading screen, which confirms the new custom firmware has been loaded successfully. Now, there is another way to install this custom firmware, and that's to use the included Nick FW programmer software. Now this application does more than just upload or flash firmware, but we'll cover those other features in a moment. So to flash the firmware using this software package, select the COM port of the radio at the bottom here. As before, make sure the USB cable is plugged in between your computer and the radio. Press the flash button and select the firmware file from that uncompressed archive. Now, once the firmware file is selected, the software is now waiting for the radio to enter flashing mode. So simply power off the radio and then hold the PTT button while turning it back on. That's the same process as what we've done when we use the web flasher. You will now notice that the firmware is flashing to the radio as indicated here. Now the screen of the radio will remain blank during this process, just like the other method. Now, once the flashing is finished, the radio will most likely reboot. Now, one of the first things that you will notice with the new custom firmware is that the display layout is different from the official firmware. Here on this screenshot, we can see the custom firmware screen on the left and the official firmware on the right. 
Now the radio shown here is currently in memory mode. The top line shows either the received signal strength when receiving or when transmitting. It can show power output or even microphone audio level as you're talking. A little band indicator is shown here just in case you need reminding if you're in VHF or UHF mode. The SQ2 here is showing that the squelch level is set to 2. The W is indicating that we're in wide mode as opposed to narrow. And the CT here indicates that CTCSS transmit is enabled. And over here on the right, the FM indicates the mode of modulation selected. Now here is the memory name that was defined in software. In this case, it's GB3AV, which is the call of a local repeater. Now this is the main receive frequency, and this frequency underneath the main yellow frequency is the transmit frequency. Now this is normal to have a different transmit frequency when programming a channel for repeaters. Here we have an RF output power level, which shows in watts. And when setting the power level output in the menu, this can be entered as a value from zero to 255. So it's quite fine. The B here indicates that we're on VFO B as opposed to A. And the CH002 shows us that we're on channel two of the stored memories. One of the features of this custom firmware that I really like is the improved S meter. Now this is the bar at the top which shows received signal strength. Now instead of just a bar graph, there's also a numeric value showing us actual S points. Well, I don't want to get into all that, uh, hey, because that's almost like politics. Uh, doing the strike in California and like one in New York. What you may have noticed while receiving in this clip is that there's also a numeric value flickering on or off just above that FM text on the right towards the top. Now this is a feature that you can enable in the menu settings. If the transmission that you're listening to is also transmitting a subtone or CTCSS, then this custom firmware will attempt to decode this tone and show you on screen. Now this is super useful if you're tuned to a repeater and you do not know what the CTCSS tone is to access it. Using this feature allows you to quickly program your radio with that correct CTCSS tone. So let's take a look at the programming application that comes bundled with the firmware download. Now as before, you do need to have the radio connected via the USB cable and you need to have the correct COM port selected which is set at the bottom of the application here. Now also along the bottom, you'll find some buttons which will allow you to either load a previously saved configuration, save the current configuration to a file locally, read from the radio, and then write to the radio. There's also an import button, and then there's that flash button that we used earlier. Now the channel tab contains all of the memories and adding or editing these memory channels is super simple. You just click on the cell that you want to edit and then enter a value. Now some of these do have a drop down choice and some do not. It's a bit like editing an Excel spreadsheet. The band plan tab allows you to configure the different bands within the radio and you can even specify the start and end frequency. There is a power calibration tab, but most likely that will have to be covered in another video as it's quite specific. The remote tab is a very interesting tab indeed. This will literally provide a real time and working remote control of the radio. You even get to view the screen of the radio on your computer in real time. Now that keypad there to the right actually mimics the keypad on the radio itself. So you can pretty much do everything on the remote tab instead of doing it on the radio. The settings tab is also super useful as it can save time configuring the radio to your liking in a quick and easy fashion. Now this actually saves having to go through each menu setting on the radio one by one. Here you can see all of the settings in one place at the same time and then just make the changes that you need. Now scan presets is another cool feature. This allows you to create a scan preset or a specific range of frequencies that you want to scan and then use the activity scanner to scan that preset and then store all of those activity channels to memory. Now I'll show you that in more detail in a moment. Now this radio also has the ability to receive standard broadcast FM radio. Here we can set some favorite radio station frequencies just so that they're easier to find when using it on the radio itself. DTMF sequence presets can be made useful if you're using internet linked nodes like Echolink, IRLP, or even Allstar that use DTMF tones to change parameters over the air. 
On the end here, we have group labels, and this is where we can group channels together in a particular group and give it a label. A bit like how you create zones on a DMR radio. You could group all your repeaters together or all your favorite airband frequency. Well, the choice is yours really. Now, strangely enough, while I was in the middle of producing this video, there was actually a new firmware upgrade released, which came with a new version of this programming software. Now, this added a cool feature called Ultragraph, where you can see a live spectrum view of the predefined frequency and then show it live on the screen in your computer, just like this. You can even use the mouse to select a frequency. OK, so let's take a last look at the activity scanner. Now, this allows us to define a preset frequency range in scan preset, just like this. Now, this example is for the airband. If we now go over to the activity scanner tab on the software and press the start button, you should see this message down the bottom. Now, if you don't, then it's not going to work. So just ensure your radio is on and that USB cable is connected. Now on the radio, press and hold the zero key until you see this, then press the blue button or make the text at the top change from scan presets to activity scan. As I only have one preset, I'll press zero. And at this point, the radio will now start scanning the frequency range defined in that selected preset. And on the top, that LED indicator will start to flash. Now back on the software, you'll now start to see a list of frequencies which activity has been detected. Now I'd recommend to leave this running as long as possible, but maybe 30 minutes or so would be sufficient. Then once you stop the scan, you can sort the results by heat, which is like a combination of detections versus signal average. Select the frequencies you want and then press copy. Go over to the channels tab and paste those copied frequencies. You can then give each frequency a name and also assign them to a group. Now, once you have all that set, simply download that to the radio using the right button. So back over on the radio, if you press the orange VM button, you would normally change between memory or VFO mode, but you'll now also be able to choose groups. You'll see the group label appear on the bottom left. Now to cycle through the groups, press the star button on the top right. Once you have the selected group, you can then use the arrow keys to scroll through the memories which are assigned to that group. And if you wanted to automatically scan through those memories in that selected group, simply long press the SCN or number three button to initiate that scan. Now there's lots of videos showing the different features of this firmware on the Facebook page that's actually made by Nick Shaw, the guy who developed this excellent custom firmware. Now, as this firmware is constantly being improved and worked on, it's possible that some features shown in this video may have changed or even new exciting features have been added. You can get all the latest on that in the forum, which I showed you earlier. Now, if you do not have one of these radios yet and you want to get one for less than $30, then check out the link in the video description. I'll leave links to my Amazon wish list as well if you'd like to contribute to the channel. Links to the forum, firmware and Facebook page will also be available in the description. Thanks again to all of you who watch my videos and a special thanks to my YouTube members and Patreon subscribers. It's all very much appreciated. Until the next video, take care of yourself and I'll see you in the next video.